This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Five men listed as wanted in Clarendon. The police in Clarendon have listed the five men as wanted. Being sought are 20 year old Romaine Murray, otherwise known as a John Tom, whose last known address is Comfort District Osborne Store in Clarendon. He is wanted for wounding with intent. He is known to frequent the communities of Buckner, Comfort, Milk River, Osborne Store, and the Four Parts in Clarendon. 25-year-old Penny Bromfield, otherwise called the Chang, whose last known address is Buzzrock, Effortville in Clarendon. He is wanted for shooting with intent and robbery with aggravation. 36-year-old O'Neill Smith, whose last known address is Lawson Boulevard, Four Parts in Clarendon. He is wanted for murder. He is said to frequent four parts in the parish. 39-year-old Steve Francis of Sunset Crescent, four parts in Clarendon. He is wanted for murder. Oral Thompson, otherwise called the Just Bake or Ronnie, he is wanted for attempted murder. He is known to frequent the parishes of Portland, Clarendon and St. James. The Clarendon police applaud the members of the parish for their continued assistance in helping to keep communities safe. Investigators believe that the arrest and the charge of these five individuals will positively impact the safety of many communities in the parish and are encouraging persons to share information about their whereabouts. Persons are also being reminded that it is a crime to harbor a fugitive. Persons with information that can assist the police are encouraged to contact the Clarendon Police at 876 986 2208 or 876-986-2529, Crime Stop at 311, the NIB tip line at 811, the police 119 number, or the nearest police station. Watchman strangled to death in Manchester bar robbery. Police are probing the murder of a watchman at a bar in Christiana, Manchester, whose body was found with an electrical cord wrapped around his neck on Wednesday. Police named the deceased as 61-year-old Anthony Williams, otherwise called Tony, a resident of Main Street Christiana, located in the northeastern section of the parish. Police sources said about 11 a.m., Williams was found with his hands and feet bound with an electrical cord wrapped around his neck inside the bar. It is believed that Williams was attacked between midnight and mid-morning. His body was later discovered at the bar located on a shopping plaza at the Brocker Gate in Christiana. Police said the establishment was broken into and robbed of an undetermined sum of cash and liquor. 11-year-old Clarendon boy dies after being electrocuted. An 11-year-old boy has died after he was reportedly electrocuted in Alston District in Clarendon on Monday. He has been identified as Ricardo Richards. Reports from the Spalding police are that about 2.30 p.m., the boy was among family members cleaning a trench that overflowed when he became entangled with electrical wires and was electrocuted. He was taken to hospital where he died while being treated. Investigations into the child's death are ongoing. Two cops in Kirkland Heights a murder case granted bail. 24-year-old Kemar Dennis, who is said to be involved in the extortion murder case of Philip Wallace, was granted bail Wednesday morning to the sum of $1.5 million in the Supreme Court. Dennis's bail was previously denied, and his lawyers Peter Champagny QC and Richard Lynch gave notice of appeal. The constable, along with two other officers, was implicated in Wallace's murder, which occurred at East Kirkland Heights, St. Andrew, on July 16, 2022. Reports are that the police had arrested Wallace for ganja possession and that the police allegedly demanded money to drop the charges. According to allegations, Wallace made a report of the demands and the police visited his home address and fatally shot him. Dennis's defense is that at the time of the murder, he was at the Norman Manley International Airport as he had made several travel arrangements prior to the incident. The co-accused Constable Carter also appealed the parish judge's ruling and was offered bail. He was represented by attorneys Valerie Nita Robertson, QC, and Kimberly Whitaker. The police officers are to return to the parish court on September 6, 2022. The third cop, Corporal Miguel Ibanks, 
remains in custody pending his appeal for bail. Police still searching for suspects who set homeless man on fire. Investigators are still searching for the suspects behind the killing of a homeless man in the vicinity of Hero Circle in Kingston on Monday. Lionel Johnson was found suffering from severe burns and taken to a hospital where he was pronounced dead. A lighter and a Molotov cocktail bomb were found at the location. Senior Superintendent Stephanie Lindsay, head of the Jamaica Constabulary Forces Corporate Communications Unit, told the news that investigators have come up short in relation to leads on who the suspects in the attack might be. The investigators are still trying to ascertain who is responsible for the death of that homeless man that was set, um, set ablaze. We know based on the evidence that they have collected at the crime scene, um, they are now looking at a case of murder. So nothing yet. They are still canvassing, still trying, and we are hoping that someone who may have some bit of information that can help the investigators in really bringing some closure to this. Because when you have a society that will look at a person who is homeless and set them ablaze, then it speaks to the level of violence that we're up against as a, as, as, as a, as a society. The local government ministry is offering a reward of $500,000 for information on Mr. Johnson's killers. Government urged to implement legislation regulating funeral homes. A funeral director is calling for the government to establish the public health funeral establishment and the mortuary operations regulations that would enable the monitoring of the industry, which he says is rife with corruption. His call comes six years after Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton promised the regulations to allow for the licensing of facilities as well as to ensure accountability and adherence to international best practices. At the time, the Health Minister warned that the self-regulated industry could lead to several issues if it continued without industry standards to abide by. But years later and with the legislation yet to be implemented, Funeral Director Paul Patmore says the self-regulation of the industry is adding to the crime problem by creating loopholes for criminals to dispose of bodies without a trace. There are cases that I see where I, I go as a government contractor, I pick up a body. The family will tell me that this, this person did not go to a doctor in six months. And I take up the body and by the morning, the same police that was there when the family was telling me that they... They did not, the person did not go to the doctor in a six-month period, can send me a letter saying I can release the body to the, the family because they will be doing a private post-mortem. When, when, when you look, it's one of those funeral homes that all they have is a suitcase. It's like they don't have a building, but they, they are the person that come for the body, maybe in an unmarked car sometime, and even in a taxi and pick up that body and gone, and then they can find a doctor to cut the body somewhere, or even just write a certificate that they, they use to see the body and stuff. If a funeral director wants to conceal a body, like somebody might pay you to conceal a body, all that undertaker would have to do is wait until they are doing a funeral. They just rest that body underneath, use that body as a cushion for another body, and the center of that to a funeral, might be gone, St. Thomas might be gone. So most of the time in Jamaica here, because of the non-regulation at, at, at funeral homes, that you don't have to report anything. There's no rec rules that you must, as a funeral home, if you pick up a body, you're supposed to record it and register it with, the, with, with a, a certain department or so. A, a person collect, can collect a money and hide a body underneath a body and send it. And you'll be looking, they would search from now till that kingdom come and they, would, they can never find anything, in no trace. So we have to, it's something that Jamaica have to call on the, the Minister of Health, the Minister of Security, he has to come on board. Now, you, you know, they, they keep telling you that we need all hands on deck. But when persons in our industry can keep up more than 30 or 40, persons in our industry telling you that this is one of the industries that you have to you have to try and correct if you want to fight crime in Jamaica. The Ministry of Health created guidelines in August 2014 for the operation of funeral establishments and mortuaries. 
It said that the guidelines were intended to mirror the public health funeral establishment and the mortuary operations and regulations, which was being reviewed by Cabinet. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.